Stan Gibalisco here. I would like to describe for you the difference between a bypass capacitor and a blocking capacitor in a very simple example. Far, far away, somewhere floating on a piece of paper, billions and billions and billions of miles from Earth, hundreds of thousands of light years above our galaxy, and here is what that piece of paper looks like. It has a very simple two transistor circuit on it. Here are the transistors Q1, Q2. These are NPN bipolar transistors that you might find, for example, in amplifier stages. Say a multi stage audio amplifier would be a good example, or a multi stage radio frequency or intermediate frequency amplifier chain. Here is an example of a blocking capacitor. And here is an example of a bypass capacitor. Now, what's the difference, really? In a radio frequency circuit, the values of these capacitors might be 0 0.01 microfarads or thereabouts, whereas in an audio frequency circuit, they might be several microfarads, and they would probably have to be either electrolytic or tantalum capacitors in those applications. The blocking capacitor is intended to block the flow of direct current while allowing the signal to pass. So the signal can pass from the output of this stage here at the collector of this transistor through the capacitor onto the base of the second transistor easily. But direct current cannot flow through this capacitor at all. So that allows us to have a positive bias on the collector here and also allows these two resistors to regulate the bias on the base of this transistor here and we can tweak these resistors to get the bias and the current levels that we want without the direct current from one circuit affecting the bias of the other one. So this capacitor blocks that direct current. The bypass on the other hand serves a, a very different purpose. That allows the signal to flow through and blocks direct current just like the blocking capacitor does, but instead of its purpose being to block something, its purpose is to let something through or to let it bypass. This capacitor allows the emitter of this transistor to be at signal ground because the signal can easily pass right through to ground while at the same time letting us use a resistor here to provide some bias, some direct current bias to this emitter. Because remember, the direct current can't pass through here. It's, as far as direct current goes, it's as if this capacitor weren't even there. As far as alternating current or the signal goes, well, it, this resistor has to be here to allow proper operation of the transistor, but uh, if we took that resistor away, the, the signal could still pass through this capacitor. It's just that the circuit wouldn't work because it would be opened up. No current could flow through here to produce the amplification. So that's what the difference primarily is. The capacitors actually behave in the same way in either application but we're just taking advantage of different aspects of that behavior. In this example, we're taking advantage of the fact that a capacitor blocks direct current. In this situation, we're taking advantage of the fact that a capacitor will pass the signal. And that's really all there is to it. But you'll find a lot of these capacitors in circuits like this, and they almost always serve one or the other of these two porpoises. Stan Gibalisco signing off, returning to where he arguably belongs, somewhere far, far away from reality. <laughs>